Hi, this is Angie with St. Louis Music Press, and I'm here talking to Cullen of Logos. Hi, Cullen. How are you doing Hi. today? Pretty good. Uh, I heard that you guys have a new EP out on iTunes. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, it's called Like Father, Like Son. Uh, we just put it out a couple months ago, strictly on iTunes right now. Um, I recorded the whole thing in Brooklyn, on uh, Coney Island, actually, with a friend of mine called Adam Richmond. Uh, and we wrote the songs together, actually, and recorded it kind of in a weird time where we were searching for a bass player, so it was just Tom and myself and Adam who produced and co-wrote the record with me. And um, so it was kind of a strange record to make because it was the first time I didn't really have a whole band together, but it was a lot of fun and uh, it kind of gave me an opportunity to think about different parts in different ways and attack it in a different way. So I kind of like the way that turned out because of that. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's a different approach. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about some of the songs on there? Maybe uh, tell us a little bit about the lyrics or uh, some stories about how the songs came about? <laughs> well, the thing about the way that we write, uh, I, mean, I guess the way that I write is I, lyrics come like last for me because they're the hardest thing for me. I'm really self-conscious about writing lyrics. So, I mean, I always go about it riff first since I'm a guitar player, so I want to fit as much riffage and whatever else into it. And I'm not really interested in the song until there's something cool musically or with the melody or with the groove or something. So, I don't know. There's not too many stories to tell with the lyrics. The lyrics are really... Um, kind of come when everything's in place and then we just kind of let the melody move us to wherever it's going to happen to take us but um, the title tra track Like Father Like Son was the uh, first song I think that we wrote for the whole thing and um, evolved out of it's kind of cool how it evolved because it started with a, a riff that is kind of buried within the chorus uh, that I liked a lot and then evolved into something completely different. Um, so I think that's kind of like a, why I like the process so much, uh, especially with writing with someone else because it kind of forced me to take things, different look at different things and um, things went in different directions than I, than I originally thought they would. So. One of the songs on the EP that's a standout song is Damage Done. Can you tell us a little bit specifically about that um, song? Damage Done is just kind of a weird song for us because there's um, we're just a three-piece, so there's, there's not too much that you can do with that live, but for this record, especially since we're kind of in a transition period, we were just like, who cares, we'll put as many tracks in as we want to. So there's a lot of... Um, there's strings in it. It's kind of a strange arrangement. Uh, there's not too much guitars in the in the chorus, which is weird for a song for me to write because I'm a guitar player, so I want to put as much guitar in usually as possible. So, um, a lot of harmonies on this record too, which was kind of weird for us, um, especially since because we're only a three piece and we try to shy away from too many harmony parts and things like that. So there's just a lot of things that we were able to explore with that song and musically that we really had before and it turned out to something that's kind of kind of strange and different and new for me and stands out for me anyway on the whole EP. So are you guys going to be working on a full-length release anytime soon? Um, we're not totally sure about that. I mean, I think, because I'm working more with co-writers now and we're just kind of writing and then playing shows and then wanting to get into the studio right away so doing a full length is kind of difficult because we're continually changing and learning more about songwriting and and getting better playing together um, so it's easier for us right now to just do a little bit and then throw it out there and see how it does and then go back and do a little bit more so we have tons and tons of material that we haven't put out yet so it's an option but I think We'd kind of like to write a couple songs, go into the studio, hash them out, and then put them out and play, and then do it that way for a while and uh, 
I think it's a little more fun for us because we're not just in one spot all the time. Because we love to do it all. We love to write. We love to be in the studio, but we also love to play. But when you do all those things for a really extended period of time, it can start to get a little boring creatively. So um, doing it this way is pretty fun. I think we're going to stick to it as long as we can manage <laughs> to do it. You mentioned that you had a new bass player. Can you tell us a little bit about him? Yeah, his name is Connor Steinhardt. Um, he's 18. Uh, he's actually just graduated from high school. He went to St. Louis uh, University High. And um, like I said, when we were making like Father Like Son, we were kind of in a transition period between bass players. And it process was going really slow. And we played with tons of different guys. But... And some of them were really good, but we couldn't really find just that right guy, especially when you're in a three-piece. Like, it's really important for the drums and bass to really be powerful. Otherwise, it's not really going to work. So we searched forever. We weren't really even sure if we were going to find anybody. I know there was a time where me and Tom were just like, why don't we just white stripes it up and <laughs> do it as a two-piece, and we'll just manage. And just kind of when we were right at wit's end about it, we got an email from Connor. He just saw an ad in uh, Guitar Center and hit us up and we tried him out and right away we knew that that he was perfect. And and yeah, he's, he's awesome. <laughs> we feel pretty lucky to have him and he's young and he's learning still and uh, it's been a lot of fun uh, playing with him and, and uh, getting better and better and better with him as we play more. That's great that it turned out that way. Yeah. Guitar Center is like the great hookup place. It is, yeah. <laughs> it's like Match.com for musicians. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> well, can you go way, way back in your mind and tell us however far back you need to go, when did you first get interested in music? What was the spark that started off? Um, I think for me, music is in my family. My, uh, my grandfather uh, is a jazz piano player, and he was playing when he was my age and really all the way up until just a couple years ago. He was always playing, and I'd listen to him play, and I think that's where I kind of got interested in wanting to, to play music. But really, I didn't start myself until um, maybe I was about 12, I think, and I was just listening to, starting to get interested in listening to music and finding music that connected with me, and I was really into, like, Pink Floyd and Genesis and, like, really strange progressive rock bands, <laughs> like King Crimson and Gentle Giant and stuff like that, and I just wanted to learn how to play it, so I just picked up a guitar and started looking up tabs on the internet and just started to teach myself and then I started taking lessons and then I started playing at school and like jazz band and stuff like that and that's and jazz bands where I met uh, other guys that I started playing with and by the time I was a freshman in high school I met some other guys that were just as passionate about it as me and that's when I started Logos originally and uh, kept uh, playing and playing and playing and members came and went but uh, it was kind of Logos has kind of been like my learning experience <laughs> musically so it's all out there for everyone to see which is a little embarrassing but uh, uh, but yeah I mean you can go and look at the first record that we put out and all the way up until now you can definitely see how I've grown and that's just kind of like what Logos is so now, even compared to other musicians it seems like you guys are all um, relatively young and got started at a young age and um, I couldn't help but notice that it seems like you have more I guess you'd say mature or more classic music tastes you know a lot of the bands that you mentioned Pink Floyd yeah and I mean everyone that's uh, that's in the band now and everyone that I've played with before uh, including myself are all consider ourselves musicians first than like showmen or wanting to wanting to play you know put on a show or whatever we just want to to learn the music and um, be the best musicians that we can. So I think that's what the attraction was to like older progressive rock, like Rush and uh, like Genesis and King Crimson and bands like that because um, it wasn't mainstream and it wasn't a three minute pop song and it was difficult to learn how to play. And so I think that's what the attraction was because it was just hard so it was a good test and 
still is really hard and still is a good test and that's why we still like it and that's still the kind of a version of the music that we like to make. The first time I saw you perform, I think uh, Logos was opening for uh, Robin Trower at the pageant. And um, I was kind of near the front row and um, there was a guy up there standing by me that just struck up a conversation. And I don't want to name numbers, but I'm guessing he was somewhere near my parents' age. You know, <laughs> older guy into, you know, Peter Frampton and old school stuff. And he saw you guys setting up and he was like, oh no, young guys. Like he just looked at me and he was like, he had this look of dread on his face. Like I have to sit through this before I get to hear who I came to hear. Right. And when you guys came out and started to play, that guy looked over at me and said, wow, these young kids are like really kicking it. Like he was one over immediately. Um, how does it feel to be able to have that cross appeal to people younger and even as old as your parents are older? Um, I mean, it's, that's pretty cool because I mean we run into that a lot. I mean that same sort of scenario like where we come in and people are just kind of like, oh, they're they're young, like they don't know what they're doing. But uh, and a lot of ways we don't feel like we do. <laughs> but but when uh, but yeah, I don't know. We people just seem to enjoy it, and uh, that's really cool. And anyone at any age is into what you're doing because it's all pretty personal, really. So. Uh, if people weren't into it, it'd be pretty devastating. But uh, if if they are, it's it's cool and it's uh, validating and yeah. Can you speak just directly to our viewers and uh, give them a message from Logos and uh, also tell them where they can find you on the web? Uh, well, you can find us at logosrock.com. It's L-O-G-O-S-R-O-C-K.com, all one word. Um, and yeah, we just want to thank you guys so much for supporting the band for like almost seven years now that I've been doing Logos and I want to thank you for uh, coming to the shows and uh, buying the music and enjoying the music and uh, all being really good friends to us. All of our, all of our fans are our friends and uh, we're fans ourselves and uh, we're going to keep doing it as long as we can. Awesome. Thank you, Colin, so much for talking to St. Louis Music Fresh. We appreciate you stopping by. Thank you. Take care.